Hi Divas. I want to see you show you a blast from the past. Now, this my bag my mother made me back in the I don't know, late 60s, early 70s. This bag has gone camping with me when I was a little girl. Um, my brother and I would go on trips with my parents through the whole month of July. My dad was a teacher and had the month of July off. So he would hook up a wheel camper to the back of our little Volvo and take off in some distant direction and go camping. And we would each have, we were allowed to take things to occupy us that would fit in this bag, in the back of the Volvo with us. Because we'd drive it and we'd see all kinds of wonderful things across country that way. And this was my bag, obviously, by that name. And on the back, she put a pocket. So this kind of had all kinds of goodies in there. Recently, I purchased some goodies from Amazon.com and my favorite thimbles. They're Singer thimbles. They're leather. They have a show you. I have a metal plate. No, I didn't need to do that. It's called Pro Series. They're leather. They have a metal plate on the top and they have a hole here so that you can put your your long nail through it. <laughs> and they're nice and, and stiff. They get a little um, they get a little loose uh, the longer you work with them. But I love this. This is Singer Pro Series Leather Thimble. Fantastic. I absolutely love them. But there was a three-pack available, so I jumped on it. Okay. And the other thing I got from Amazon, I will link them down below, is an eight-pack of... Let's see, one, two, three, four... There's six. <laughs> okay, it's a six-pack of wooden um, embroidery hoops. And that I needed for all the different projects that I remembered I still had. I've got this and another palette from Diamond Painting Gifts. It's balsa wood, and it's got all kinds of holes around it so you can put your thread in there and identify them. Now, I want to show you things I've been working on and things I have yet to work on. All right, it looks like I got this palette at a, at a resale shop for 45 cents. Creative Circle. <laughs> and there are two larger hoops in here. No need to worry about them. I have projects that I haven't started yet. This is Grandma Design. It says, one is closer to God in a garden than anywhere else on earth. I'm planning on doing that one for my mom. That's Counter Cross Stitch. And that's the palette. It is on, what count? It's 11 by 14 inches. It's on 14 count Ada cloth. This is called a Weekender, and again, I got it on sale somewhere. Um, it's called the Dory, and finished it will be seven inches by five inches, and it is on 14 count Ada, and it has its own little mast um, backing, and it's got a, the needles in here, sandy colored thread. I'm going to use that, do that for mom for the. Um, yeah, for the shore house. For some reason, I have gold thread in here, <laughs> iridescent thread, metallic thread. I don't know why I have that in here. Another project that I have started. Oh, okay, there's some bronze and gold in here. Um, is a moccasin kit, a Native Heritage moccasin kit, and from Tandy Leather Company. I got it a while back and I haven't put them together yet. They have a foam sole in it. I want to put some beadwork. I want to do some of my own beadwork on the, the front of them. But I have, I want to do that in the fall. That's in here. And I'll show you that in a minute. This is one I started when my in-laws moved to Arizona. And I got one finished for them, but I didn't finish this one. called a Jiffy Kit. It's got Native American markings on it. The bag is just disintegrated and I need to wash the wash the fabric before I move on. This is, you know, even weave fabric and that's how I started. See, I got some kind of mark up here. 
probably from working with dirty hands as a young lady. <laughs> so I'm going to clean that up and finish that. We finished that this summer. Counted cross stitch, as you know, is done on a blank canvas of even weave fabric, and you count your stitches rather than it being printed onto your canvas. I have some various pieces of Ada cloth that I get from resale shops, 50, 50 cents a piece somehow. <clears throat> this is a beaded angel, an ornament that I will do. This is um, a handkerchief. I will work on them again one of these days. Mom was doing a handkerchief quilt. She did a handkerchief quilt. And she gave us all a the pattern and the handkerchief to make into the quilt piece. I got this beautiful rose one and the the square to put it on. And I will make it one of these days. I I just I might do a whole quilt because I do have other handkerchiefs. And hey, if you have any handkerchiefs that that you're that are sitting around at home that you don't want anymore, uh, I'd be glad to take them to put into a quilt like this, or send you a copy of the pattern so that you can make one of your own. Just email me at Wanda's Workbasket at gmail.com. The link is down below in the box, as is my address, my post office box. Um, I do take gifts of women's hankies. <laughs> <laughs> strange things right or I would be glad to send you a uh, email you a copy of the pattern for that when we entered seminary they gave us a piece of white fabric to use as like a prayer shawl and they we had you know we could do it whatever we wanted with them and people painted on them and you know did markers and stuff on them I didn't want to do that I started pulling threads on mine to make it like an open weave area on the corners and I pulled threads evenly all the way around but what I wanted to do with it was embroider do some embroidery on it I never finished that but I want to do that uh, in a prayer shawl way here and what I wanted to do with it was my grandmother my grandmother it was born in 1901, had given me a batch of silk thread, silk embroidery thread. And this is the actual um, sleeve that they came in, that the actual markings in it. Now my, my grandmother's mother had a store, had a little country store, and I think she must have sold some of the, the threads. They're beautiful purples and and peaches and your regular uh, ecru thread and they are silk they're 100 percent silk color fast it says the colors are as beautiful as when she gave them to me in the 60s um i don't think they're going to be as strong as they were anymore i don't know but and this is a silk one of her silk hankies that's in here that i may just i may just embroider some of the silk over the sink silk hanky uh I don't know. I, I want to use it to honor her. And it may just go into crazy crazy quilt that I want to make one day. Never know. But that's her. And the one thing I wanted to show you that I started that I am going to finish this summer for sure. Let me put these goodies back in here. <clears throat> this is my go-to embroidery and cross-stitch bag. I'll have to do something with these extra threads. I don't know what to do with. I still leave it sitting around. It's seen better days, but... <laughs> okay, this is a counter cross stitch that uh, my ministry mentor had given me. She does, didn't do cross stitch. She was an artist in paint and color. And uh, so she gave me this as a present and I started it. I did most of the kit. And I am still doing the outlining for it. She passed, and then I, I didn't want to finish the kit. But I do want to finish it now. 
to honor her. This is, and I'll bring you a close up. Maybe not quite that close. Here we go. This is the kit. It is a church. You can see the church porch here, the porch door. It has the gate uh, with the garden behind it. And I love this gate door. I love, I did some of the back stitching on it already. I want to show you that gate door. Can you see it? Oh, pull the wrong way. Look at, the, look at the heart in the circle in that gate. And then I did the back stitching in the brickwork on the posts on either side of that. And the door. Bring out a bit. I also love this window. The window here with the cross stitching across the top of it, making it look like a stained glass window or gothic. Um, leaded window anyway and it's got some writing on here just nonsense writing on it but it's beautiful it's on a blue background I will finish it and steam it and it's got like a garden path garden behind the gate and a garden path in front so uh, it needs more back stitching to define the trees and the outline of the bricks and the, the brickwork in the back. When that's done, I'll let you sh I'll let you see that. I'm going to keep it out of this gross plastic thing. That I will finish and frame. Okay, other projects that I have sitting around waiting to be done. I have one waiting to be framed over there. Maybe I'll show you that. Okay, here's one that I made for my in-laws. And when we were cleaning out their house, um, I brought it back home. Off of there. One earth, one people. It is on 14 count, I believe. I put my initials at the bottom and put 2003 is when I finished it. And I put beads on the dream catcher. I added beads to the dream catcher. I think I'm going to add some more to it now that I'm thinking about it. But I will frame this one as well. I love it. The earth here and the feathers off the conch, the dream catcher. And it is a dream that one earth, one people. We'd love to love to think that that would be true. So this is on my two frame pile. <laughs> she rolled it up with plastic bags in the center. Because you don't fold them. You don't want to get creases in them. These little plastic things I got at the dollar store. These little plastic file containers. I have a thimble in here and my scissors and a... This I got from AliExpress, I guess, or one of the diamond painting companies. It's a needle needle catcher. There's a magnet in there, but it looks like a lipstick tube, and this looks like the Monet Garden, Monet Dogwood. But I put that in here. Found my Ginger's embroidery <laughs> thing. These are two that I've gotten finished. They are on the Organza, but they have white felt behind them. Okay. Got the ring. I, it's been a long time since I've done them, so I am still practicing. So please don't uh, critique my stitching just yet. Getting back into practice. And they have long book tassels. The one I'm finishing, I'm working on now, is this one. It's Again, it's on organza and there will be some white behind it. It will look like that when it's finished. With the pink tassel. I have my... Yeah, there's the white fabric for it. I have a diamond painting box in here, but basically I keep thimbles in one end and pencil, pen, that kind of thing in the other. And that's the organza one that I'm working on now. These are the patterns from the first two that I showed you. And another organza one here 
it's a different it's like a bell pull type of thing it's different it's more oriental it has a little rabbit on it isn't that cute isn't that cute they come with a metal frame and that's what you put around the design and stitch over so that it it remains nice and taut and this had beads with it too nice. So these are my little organza, uh, organza projects. You can find a lot of projects on Embroidopria. You can also find them on some of the diamond painting companies have an embroidery uh, section. If I remember where I got these, I will put the links down below as to where you can find them. And again, these little plastic things I found at the dollar store at Dollar Tree somewhere in the past. Now, <clears throat> I got two bags from, I don't know, they, they send around catalogs several times a year. These are meant to put VCR tapes in. They're that big. Big zipper thing on the top. So I'm putting all my, my kits in these that I have yet to do. I have two of these. I thought they were going to be big enough for my tall stickers, my, my planner stickers, but they are not. So I have two other bead projects. One is a beaded, beaded waves cuff. Gives you a bunch of beads in a little organza bag. Another is a puffy puffy heart that's like a keychain charm. Those are my other beaded projects to do. I found at a resale shop, shop I found a magnifier that you rest on your chest and it has a hanging thing to it so I want to try that out and test that to see how that works. I have another embroidery project that's a brooch and it comes with all the things you need to make it into a brooch. This one I found, I think I found this at Joann's. It's a, a form of Zen stitching, Zen embroidery. I guess it gives you the black and white pattern and then you do whatever stitches in whatever colors you want in it. And that's what that looks like. So it doesn't come with thread, but I've got a ton of thread. If I like that, I'll try to do it in other ways. This is a very wild counter cross stitch. This is not the original bag it came in. You can scan this, the QR code, and it can give you the pattern again. And that's what it's supposed to look like in the end. This riot of fluorescent colors. What I don't like about some of these kits is that the colors that they put in the pattern here and on the canvas are not the colors of the thread that you're supposed to use in those areas and that really ticks me off. Now this has a different type of background. It just has the grid on it. Okay, so you're supposed to go to the grid and say, okay, this is zero to ten at the top here. I find zero to ten on the pattern and I look for number 25 go down here to color number 25 and that's what I put into those areas the background I don't even see what <clears throat> The background, I think, is just this white and blue, plain. The blue and white stripe, but I don't see... I don't know. Okay, well... 
number 25 is a beige a beigey color but here it's on an orange it's on orange um, but okay that you can count the stitches if I did it on my phone or my tablet I could blow it up and see how many stitches of each color this will be a challenge let's see I'll show you let's up. Okay, that would be a challenge to do. And that doesn't divide it by every 10 on here. It looks like going down that side and going down the 20. It missed the 20. Every other one it got right, but it didn't put the, the 20, the 20 line in. I'll have to watch that. a counter cross stitch. It's a very stiff, stiff canvas. The colors are supposed to be phenomenal. Sorry, I didn't make you, didn't want to make you sick as I was showing that to you. I got this from a diamond painting company. And I will put a link down below if I can find out where, find out where I got it. And in with this beading stuff, I've gotten a gotten three kits all together for tambour beading. They give you netting. They give you the colors. They give you beads. Okay. They give you special tools. Um special beads. They give you metallic threads. This is a tambour tool. It has a needle that you put in it. And it directs the, the bead work. You have to you have to thread your needle with the right beads in the right order before you stitch them down. And the fabric is this weave. It's like a mesh. It's like a mesh weave. And it didn't it has all the instructions on the website. There's no it didn't come with a book, it didn't come with instructions, it didn't tell you what it was. It, when I opened it, I thought this is what it has to be because it didn't give me any other instructions. Not the name of the manufacturer, not a place where I got it from, nothing. Receipt, nothing. It started out from the Facebook group that I found. But I bought myself a tambour beading for beginners. A classic art of India embroidery. So it's embroidery with beads. And it comes with all kinds of black and white, but this is how they do it with the tambour needle. I prefer learning from a person, you know, from a person rather than a kit, but I, there are there are instructions on YouTube. There are people who do it that can show you how to do that. So that's that bag. I have one more bag of goodies to show you. <laughs> one more bag of goodies to show you. Okay. So in this bag. Again, from another diamond point painting company, I found uh, a bobbin winder where you can wind the thread on these little thread cards, and I got some plastic thread cards to go with it. These are counter cross stitch and cross stitch kits. Now, and again, I got them from these are from DIY Digital Art. probably did an unboxing for them a couple years back when I bought them. These are some of the tea, the tea ones that have, this one has tea and honey. 
this is their pattern, so it's a small one, which is good. This is the fabric, and I'm amazed at how perfectly it's printed on top of the, uh, the actual squares, because this is an even weave, and you stitch exactly where the squares are. It gives you the list over here. It even gives you the DMC number on the side, which I really like. But obviously, the background is not bright yellow. As you can see on the picture, it's white. You cannot tell by this picture really what it is that you're making because the colors do not match with what the colors that they're going to be in the end, which is what I have a frustration about with these kits. You do get the full palette of colors. And you get a little kit pack that goes with it that has a needle threader, a little pom-pom ball full of different sizes of needles, and you get a, an adjustable metal thimble type thing. And they come in every kit. So, it's just a matter of figuring out which color that goes where. And I did a tapestry, uh, a needlepoint tapestry from one of these companies and it was difficult, really difficult to tell. So that's the tea and honey. This is tea and strawberries. I'm not going to open every one. I'm just going to show you the packs. This is tea and candy cane and cookie. This one is December, like hot chocolate. It says ho, ho, ho. <laughs> so those kits. Now I have some bigger kits here. Um, this is just a, a pattern called the Gleaners. It's the Women in Ruth. I found this at a resale store that I really, I really loved. So that's just the pattern. You'd have to buy your own fabric and your own thread for that, which I have plenty. I really don't need to buy any. I'm sure I have enough to do that. Okay, these are the Joy Sunday Counter Cross Stitch Kits. This is obviously a cross and roses, the heart of rose. It gives you some of the instructions for doing it on the back and on the inside of the Joy Sunday kits. These are like the premium kits, I think. Again, you get, this is, it's not really counted cross stitch, it's just cross stitch, but it's on even weave fabric. It gives you all the information you need to know around the sides. It gives you all the thread in it and the needles. And it gives you a another pattern that you can use to stitch by. Okay. So those are the Joy Sunday kits. I have a teapot with pansies. You'll notice a theme. <laughs> Tea time. Tea bag. Another tea time. Any time is tea time. A little clock. It's be kind of cool to make into a clock. I could get clockwork to do that. There's some beautiful butterflies. This isn't a Joy Sunday kit, but it's one of the other ones that gives you the, the weird colors for it. And here's a Joy Sunday butterfly. A fall butterfly. I have a couple one, a couple little kits going here too, and they'll be the last that I can show you here. I'll pile these back in. I need another zipper bag here. Come on. Okay. Stay in there now. All right, I have another C kit I picked up at a place down in Cape May. Okay. I'm going to do for my mom for the beach house. It's called Peaceful Shores by 
Allen Guyana for Jan Lynn Needlecraft. And these are kits from overseas. I think they're bookmarks or bell poles. Probably bookmarks. Um, January. February. March. April. May. June, July, August, September, October, November, and December. <clears throat> I have plenty of relatives in birthdays, you know, birthdays in those months that I thought I would, you know, make them and send it to them one at a time. So that is my embroidery, uh, my cross stitch and embroidery stash at the moment. I have lots of thread as well. Okay, so that is the full complement of my embroidery and kind of cross stitch stash that I need to do. Uh, I haven't hadn't done it in a while. I'm starting to get back into it again. And I remember one time my husband, right after we were married in the 80s, he bought me a giant three ring binder with lots of photo sleeves, like the size of when you used to get your photos printed as slides, you could get plastic sleeves that were like baseball card sleeves but at the size of slides and um, for a three ring binder and I kept all my DMC floss on those little cards in each of the sections so that's my collection of stash and I, I like doing this over the summer when it's nice and cool and I have something to do in my my hands while I'm watching movies and stuff all right what are you doing currently? Are you doing embroidery? Are you doing diamond painting? Are you doing some other craft? Uh, making dollhouses perhaps or another kind of craft? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to have you join us on Tuesday for Tuesday Night Tea and Talk where you can we can whip and chat to our heart's content at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on a Tuesday night. All right everybody see you later. Bye. Bye.